This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 150 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate. This is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And yeah, if you didn't hear just a moment ago, this is a milestone for us. Episode number 150. Alex, I don't know how we made it this far. I don't know why, but we're still here doing these action movies. And we still got like <laughs> 900 more planned after this. But uh, how does it feel? How do you how do you feel about us hitting 150? Actually, I like it. It's pretty fun. We threw, I mean, 150 episodes. We've seen movies that I'd never seen before, right? And I mm-hmm. added into my collection because I purchased them, uh, whether it's Blu-ray or 4K. And it's been really fun. There's movies that we haven't seen. There's movies that we revisited and we hated. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So that's been, that's been actually really a, a fun thing about the channel, whether you're a, a beginner that listens to, that don't know much about action, you go through the journey with us. We're giving you guys franchises. And then we're giving you guys solo movies with themes behind it, whether it's a uh, Jason Statham month, Mel Gibson month, woman led movie month. Um, We did two Stallone months already. Um, We're tired of the Stallone. 55 Um, Stallone movies. already. Yeah, we did all those already. And we still got more to go. We did uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger month. We got Tom Cruise coming up. Coming up, we got Tom Cruise, Bruce Willis, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Liam Neeson. We got, listen, the yeah. fact that, you know what I like about this show? We've we've watched 150 action movies and we have a whole list and there's still so many we haven't even there, looked at. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we are movie watching machines. Now this episode we are doing live. So if you're watching right now, great. Congrats to you. And if you're just listening on the go, you missed it. It was, it was already in the past, but uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of, uh, we're on the, as you guys know, we are moving along the river of time. We went, we started in the 70s. We've now moved upriver. We are in the 80s currently. We did a little bit of Roadhouse already last week, right? Now mm-hmm. this week, moving on to a big one. This is a big, this is a big 80s movie. Top Gun, 1986, starring Tom Cruise, directed by Tony Scott. I mean, starring other people, but he's the star, Tom Cruise, and uh, directed by Tony Scott. Alex, how long has it been since you've seen Top Gun? So Top Gun, I haven't seen it in a while. The last time I seen Top Gun is when the 4K came out. I don't remember when the 4K came out. I don't. I know it was last year sometime it came out when Paramount put that movie out. Or maybe two years ago, I think. Yeah, I think it could have been that. But that's that the last time I seen it, to be really honest okay. with you. Yeah, I'm not that heavy on, on, on Tom Cruise. Me neither. I mean, I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't know exactly when was the last time I watched it, but I know it's been a while. So I was actually looking forward to seeing this movie, and I have a lot to say about it. I'm not going to lie. I have a lot to say about this movie. Mm-hmm. I hope no one gets mad. I don't think people will. I think they'll like our review overall. I know this movie has a lot of fans. So, but we're going to be honest. You know how we do. Now, before we get into it, let's give you guys some Rotten Tomato score. Now, Alex, this is one of those classic scenarios. We've run into this many, many, many times on our show. Critics is one way and the audience is a totally different way. So this has a 57% critic score as far as mm. the reviews are concerned. 57. But the audience score sits at a very nice 83%. And I don't know I about you, that. but that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I, I can totally see that. I mean, uh, yeah. it's alone is set in the 80s, bro. Like, this is one of the, well, we'll get to it. But this is one of the most 80s movies that there is. <laughs> period. Yeah, it is, pretty much. We're going to discuss when we get to, the, to that section. But first things first, you already know when I host, Alex gets to go first. Uh, we're going to be talking about our lead character, played by Tom Cruise. Of course, his call signal is Maverick. Nobody yeah. calls him whatever, Mitchell or whatever his name is. Pete Maverick. Mitchell. Pete Mitchell, the worst. Yeah. Maverick. Uh, go ahead. Take it away. All right. So, yeah, Tom Cruise plays Pete Mitchell, a.k.a. Maverick. Now, I liked him. I, he was very arrogant. He's an arrogant flyer. But the reason why is because he doesn't want to live in his father's shadow because his father was another top flying uh, pilot. He was another pilot in, in the Top Gun. I don't think he was in the Top Gun p- uh, program, but he was another pilot that flew the F-16. And he was known, well-known, in, in that I, I don't. I always forget the name of the naval school or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, um, but I just know they're Navy pilots. Yeah, they're not like the Air Force or anything like. That. Yeah, the Navy pilots. Like he was top of the class and everything, and he he was basically in the shadow of his dad, and he started to become arrogant. He was very ruthless. He didn't. He was just all about himself when he was in the sky. He didn't care about his like partner in the back. So, 
I liked it. I thought he was really good. He fit the. This movie's a typical '80s movie lead character. Okay, mm-hmm. he's arrogant. He got the soundtrack. He got the girl. He got the motorcycle. You know, he has his friend Goose, which you can relate to Goose. Everyone has a goosey friend, right? That you just. I'm the goose of most of my friends. Yes, that's you're me. the goose. Yeah, I'm the goof. The goofball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah pretty much. Goof. Everyone is the yeah. goose of of everyone's. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, yeah. Then you got the Ice Man, which is Val Kimmler. He's not a villain, but he's nope. just the, the 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 top of the class. The the you know the nerd of nerds, and he goes by the fine line of the of, of flying. Where Maverick doesn't go well, he doesn't go by the rules. He breaks rules when he's in the sky, and I loved yeah. it. I thought he was really good. I give Maverick a five. I think he's a really good character, and I yeah. don't relate to him, but I relate to him in this podcast because that's me. I'm Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, you guys saw the you you saw the blooper before that you played. That's that's you're the Maverick of us, the two of us. Yes, I would me. never say such a thing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> All right, so lead character. You know what? I don't really disagree with you on anything you said. I actually think this is a great lead character. I love Tom Cruise. I love Tom Cruise as a as a movie star. I think he's a good actor. May, very good sometimes. But I wouldn't put him in like the top tier of acting, but I put him at the very top as far as like just a movie star. And he's one of my favorites. I think he's great. I really enjoy Maverick in this. He has a journey. I'm always there for a character with a journey. You know, if you guys listen to some of our other shows, you've noticed maybe like when a character is just sort of stagnant or doesn't really have an arc or just sort of, you know, I, I I I can still like them, but they're not always my favorite. This guy starts off as a cocky jerk, right? He, they show him at the very beginning doing stuff. You, you get right off the bat. I mean, his call signal is Maverick, which says all you need to know. And then, of course, he does things that are not by the book. And then he gets like lux his way in pretty much to this Top Gun thing. And then once he gets there, same thing. Now he meets a girl, falls in love. Then something tragic happens. It changes his perspective on it. He learns to actually do things properly. But the whole time, he has extreme skill, right? Like, he is an incredible pilot. Everyone knows it, but he just, he's reckless at the same time. And the, you know, he 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 goes from being one thing to being something different by the end of the film. I really enjoy a good arc like that. I think he's, as far as an action movie lead, I, I think he's, I don't really have any issues with him. So I also gave him a five. I just think, you know, if you're talking about iconic characters in films, Maverick is an iconic character of an eight of eighties film, in my opinion. Yeah, the, the movie is, but he is too. And look, they're making a sequel like forty years later, almost, and it's called Top Gun Maverick, and it's still Tom Cruise, and he still looks like he only aged twenty yeah. years. He's he's good enough to carry a, a whole another movie now um, of of a movie that didn't need a sequel at all. So I think he's a five out of five, in my opinion. Um, okay, now villain. So this is gonna be this is. Uh, I mean. I'll let you go with, with however you want to score it, but uh, this is not a villain movie, if we're being honest. It's not a villain movie. I'm just going to... I'm going to go with the damn Russians that were yeah, fighting that, the that, pilots. That's what I scored. Yeah. You did? Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to go with the... I Tell the truth. Them, I'm going to give them a five, but, but the thing is, they're pilots, but to be really honest with you, I'm going to I'm gonna give it a one because they were not in the movie. <laughs> like... Uh, <laughs> It's yeah. it sucks to say because like in this category we have so much fun with because we just make fun of the villains but yeah. there's no villains in in Top Gun. I mean you do have the five Russian planes at the end of the film. Val Kimmler is not really a villain. He's just there to arrogate uh, you know to piss off, you know, Maverick to push him to become the best in the flight yeah. school. So Honestly, for me, there's no villain. So I gave it a one. I'm not even going to hold this up because there's nothing to talk about except the, the planes that were black and red with the Russian symbol. But other than that, yeah, there's other more fun stuff to talk about. So I'm not yeah. going to harp on this. It's a one. Sometimes we do watch these movies where our form, you know, we have we have a formula and our formula almost works against us. Sometimes it just happens that way. There really is no villain. At the very end, there's this military thing going on. There's these other pilots and they have no names, no faces. They don't talk. They're not there until the last 20 minutes. And so I cannot give that a high score. Even if they're actually like what you'd consider real life deadly people, in movie wise, they're nothing. So I gave it a one. Let's not even harp on it. This is not the classic hero versus villain action film. It's just not that. All right, action. This has action, but it doesn't have that typical action that we all love with the hand to hand or nothing. This is straight aerial action scenes. And I loved it. 
I liked it. I thought it was really good. Um, you don't get as many of it. You just get the training, which there's really nothing because it's just training. So I'm not going to consider training as action, right? It's just maneuvers in the sky. But man, when they start to get into the live action, I mean, it's pretty much the action sequence is pretty much the ending when they go up against the five, the the five, the five bogeys, if you want to yeah. call them that. I liked it. Tony Scott, let me just tell you, for I, I, this is the first movie I seen with F-16s as the main, you know, vehicles in the sky. He shot this damn thing. And I it was really like I was in the edge of my seat watching this in 4K. And I knew what was gonna happen. But it, the way he shot it. You felt like it, you know, like, oh, man, you know, I can't see you, man. And you see the, the thing he's like flying by us and, and you see everything happening so fast. Like you're in the cockpit with Maverick. I liked it. I thought it was really cool. I was engaged with it. Again, the only scenes that we really have is towards the end. But I gave it a four and a half because I was all up in it at the end of the battle. I thought it was really good. Yeah. So this is a rare, this is going to be a rare scenario for me, but okay. the fact of the matter is it's not a ton of action, like traditional action, right? It's not a bunch of hand, there's no like fights, there's no guns and there's no, there's nothing like that. But on a technical level, especially for 1986, there's no CGI. So he, this is like, there's the one scene at the beginning when Tom Cruise's plane is upside down over the other plane. You could tell it's like composited, but that's fine. That's, you know, the technology of the time. Other than that, it's airplanes going fast and being filmed going fast. There's explosions. They're not CGI explosions. They're actual explosions. And sometimes you just have to respect the craft of the action direction. And Tony Scott took this ball and he knocked it right out of the park, in my opinion. So while it's not like like nonstop, bombastic, crazy action on a technical level, it is incredible, especially for the time. I gave it a five because I just think I just think it's too it's too well done. And considering again that it's 36 years old, I I I can't I can't give it a four. I can't give it a three. It's a five. I think it's but but this is the rare occasion where I'm gonna give a movie with this little bit of action a five because it's just so it's just so good and it looks so cool there's so many shots in this there's one early when they're flying and like it's like an overview and there's two jets below and then like the water is underneath like it just looks amazing so yeah I, i'm gonna give it a five out of respect for the craft okay storyline i think from here is where it's where this is where we're gonna start getting into some some interesting conversations <laughs> storyline um okay so storyline I kind of digged it. The storyline, I liked Maverick's storyline. The overall picture, it's very 80s. I mean, him falling in love. I didn't care for the falling in love with the chick. I, I felt like that was a very, I just didn't care for that. <laughs> I liked the story with Maverick fighting his father's demons. I thought that worked. I love the whole thing with Goose dying. That worked for me in this storyline. So for me, that is where I enjoyed the movie the most. The others, I loved him bickering with Iceman. That is very brotherhood. You know, that's very, um, what's it called? Um, fraternity. Bromance. Like yeah. a fraternity, right? Like yeah, just okay, picking on people. Him and Goose had the bromance. Yeah, they had the bromance. But it, it felt more of like a, 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 like a camaraderie, but it was just them just, you know, yeah. getting to know. I got, the, I know, I got what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So. I liked it. I thought that was the the, the core of the movie. I loved. I love the, f the flying. Like it, it just. It, it, and that's why I can't wait to see the sequel because we know Tom Cruise is really flying an F sixteen in this one. <laughs> he freaking so, learned. He's learned something. Yeah, he's he, flying something. Yeah, he's doing it. So I love it. So with that, I gave it a four. I gave it a four. I'm not going full five. That five is yeah. like everything. So I, I gave it a four. I, I really. I think this is a great film. Yeah. So here's where. I just got to be honest with my with it. my sensibilities. Yeah. It's a three for me. It's a three. <laughs> Look, when yeah. I break it down, I'm thinking the storyline. Okay, yeah, I gave Tom Cruise a five because I like Maverick's arc, right? This is an hour and 45, 49 minute movie. Mm -hmm. And I like his arc as a character. I agree. I do not like the love story with him and Kelly McGillis. I think mm -hmm. it feels weird and rushed. You know, first of all, they meet at a bar. It's kind of cute. That's cute. You know, he did a good job, whatever. Then she's not interested. Then she's interested. Then she literally is in love with him in like three scenes. <laughs> I, oh, I'll save that for overall. Anyway, uh, so, you know, I didn't love the love story. I thought I, I do like him and Goose together, but I just feel like there's certain things that are really underdeveloped with Goose. I wish they I wish he got when when he died. It was sad, but it would have been more sad if he had a little bit more story 
time. You know what I mean? I like Meg, Meg Ryan plays his wife. You know, they could have done a little bit more between them. You get a little bit and he dies like so suddenly. Also, I laughed. I laughed at that scene because oh, you can only do it a certain way. He gets launched into the into the lid of the, <laughs> of the airplane. Well, that does show like, you, though, that anything could happen. No, like, no, I, yeah, I get it. I'm just saying from know, like just watching evil. it with the 80s movie. And it's just like, and then uh, <laughs> I, I giggled. Movie. Yeah. Um, and also, I just think the overall storyline is not that like the, it's a, it's all about a top gun is like a school it's like a it's like a competition where you graduate from. I would have liked it better probably if it was like an actual war movie. Like if the last yes. 20 minutes was more like the overall storyline and Maverick, you keep most of the stuff the same, I probably would have scored it higher. But the fact that they're like basically in like a flight college program for a little bit and then him and, and Iceman, like, you know, I, OK, they're a little bit of like eh, Iceman. I don't really consider him an antagonist. He's just really good. And Maverick is he wants to beat him pretty much, but right. I, Iceman's not a bad guy. He's just doing what he does. You know what I mean? Yep. He even says sorry when, when his friend dies. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of corny stuff in this too, but we'll get into it in overall overall for me, the storylines of three, I don't think it's like an incredible story, but it doesn't necessarily take away from the overall film in my opinion. So we'll get to that in a second because you get to go first with overall. Okay. Overall, I enjoyed this movie a lot. It's, it's a very, 80s film mm -hmm. and there's certain movies that even if you watch in the 80s you don't consider it 80s you know what i mean you just don't see yeah. it in that in that landscape this one is 80s <laughs> this one you can smell it oh, you yeah. can see it you it's dripping oozing. It. yeah you could yeah. taste it it's dripping out your tv 80s bro and i loved it <laughs> i was like give me the eight. i was just drinking it up <laughs> what makes it? I was drinking it, cheese, bro. melted I was cheese. Yeah, I was just yeah. like that. Take it to me. But my <laughs> my thing was that that I liked about it was the soundtrack. Mm. It has famous, a unique very soundtrack. It's a it's a unique soundtrack, right? You got the beginning is like ping, the bells are chiming, and you're like, what the hell? And you hear the your your Adobe Amos is kicking in, and there's rumbling, and it's the win in 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 in. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like tightening, tightening yeah. all the little things yeah. on the ship. The guy the ship. is tightening yeah. nuts, and and yeah. dudes are doing this, and, and, and all of a sudden, and, and then you see Maverick just pull zone. up. Danger zone comes on, and that's it. You know, you're going in, you're in the highway, bro. You're in the highway to the danger zone, <laughs> and you know, shit is gonna go down when the highway to the danger zone starts. You know, something's yeah. gonna go up. And I loved it. I said, you know what? You got to give me this in a new movie, bro. Because if there's no danger zone, I'm giving that movie a flat one. <laughs> if they don't do some version of it or just the regular version, I'll be mad. A little yeah. bit. I'll be a little bit mad. No, I'm going to be really pissed. I'm going to give this shit give a, it one. a one. I'm going to give it a one. I don't care how great it is. If I don't got no highway to the danger zone or Mighty Wings. The Mighty Wings is another good song. Anyway, and then you got to take my breath away, right? Take my breath away. <laughs> that was stupid sex scene, which I didn't need it. The PG um, sex scene. I love yeah, it. The PG with the olive. PG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? So much like, kissing. Yeah. yeah. Too, too much, right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, soundtrack phenomenal. I think all the actors played the role perfect, right? Val Kimler, Anthony Thomas. Or Anthony Edwards. Edwards um, from yeah. Revenge of the Nerds. Then you have um, my boy, what's his name? Slacker, right? From Back to the Future, the, the principal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I look. Oh, Tom I, I Garrett is in this too? Yeah. So Tom I think everything Garrett. worked. I gave it a four. I'm telling you, the soundtrack, the, the, the environment, the cinematography of sexy engines going off. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and not the volleyball scene. scene. I don't like the volleyball no. scene. Don't, don't get me with the volleyball. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what you got? So a two? That's something that marks against it for me. Uh, Rev <laughs> just said something. And, um, uh, you know, like this is has a lot of the 80s cheese. And that works for some people. And it doesn't work for some people. Uh -oh. For me, it, I'm 50-50 with it. Sometimes I find it funny. Sometimes I'm like, what is this? And this movie has a lot of what is this moments like the volleyball scene? It's why is it five minutes long? Like, why am I watching them play an entire volleyball match with no shirt? And the one, the part that it gets me every time is when uh, Goose's uh, like wing partner guy, he does that flex. He like stands sideways. <laughs> yeah, and flexes. Like, yeah. like, what is this? <laughs> Bro, what am I watching right now? Yeah. Also, everyone's sweaty all the time in this movie. Uh, all, every go to any scene. And at least two people in that scene are sweaty. It's, it's hot. I guarantee. 
No, it, everywhere though. They're indoors. <laughs> they're outdoors. They're in a plane. They're anything. It's just sweaty. Everyone's sweaty. Look, I live in Florida. It's hotter here than anywhere. I don't sweat every single time I wake up. But anyway, it, the, that I didn't like. And then the music. Mm. Okay, here's what I'm going to say about music. Oh my! Here's what's interesting about it. This is this is like (laughs) a movie that only like there's five, but really this whole movie has like four musical cues in it. It's weird. So you have like the opening part that you were talking about, like the main kind of score. Mm -hmm. Then you have the sad music, which is when after Goose dies, there's a couple scenes with the sad music. Take my breath away plays about twelve times. The music for Take My Breath Away plays like ten different times. This is the 15 minute version of that song. Mm. Uh, And then Danger Zone plays multiple times. So it's like, and don't get me wrong. I think it's a great song. I do think it's a great song. I just think it's funny that there's really only like four main musical beats throughout the whole thing. But it works. I think it works. I like the soundtrack. I do think it's good. Um, Overall, it's a four for me. I think this is one of those movies. And if I'm being completely honest, and it's fine. These exist. We talked about this when we did The Mummy a Mm. while back. I find this to be watchable crap. I mean that in the best way possible. But I'm mostly referring to the storyline. I think this is a great, it's a very well-made movie. Don't get me wrong. Like Tony Scott's direction is great. The cast is really good. But from a story perspective and like a lot of elements of it, it's a cheesy, it's a really cheesy movie, but it's entertaining. And I like watching it. So I give it a four. I I do enjoy Top Gun. Um, I've seen it a few times. Again, I haven't seen it in a while, but every time I watch it, I have a good time. I like it. I like, you know, like I said, I like watching Tom Cruise. I like Meg Ryan, even though she's barely in it. I like her better than the main girl. I, I, Kelly McGillis doesn't really do much for me. I hate the sex scene. I think it's weird. It's a PG movie. So they show nothing except really, really open mouth kissing. Like they both just open their mouth and touch their open mouth to each other. And it cracks me up every single time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. It's a lot of fun. I gave it an eight. Okay, what's your total? My total points is 18 and a half. Mine's an 18, but... It probably would be in the 20s if this had like real villains. You know what I mean? Like this is a good movie. This is a good 80s action movie. It's got like a love story. You know, if you're a lady, yeah, it's got a bunch of shirtless, sweaty guys. It's got a love story. If you're just a dude, it's got the bromance, the camaraderie and some jets and some explosions at the end. So it's got a little bit of everything for everyone, in my opinion. 18 out of 25. 18 and a half for you. So coming up next episode, we are going to be moving, uh, wrapping up the Bourne franchise. Of course, our next episode is going to be Jason Bourne, the fifth and final installment in the Bourne franchise. Finally getting to that. And our next and final 80s movie before we move into the 90s is going to be a Brian De Palma film as voted on by you guys, the listeners over on Instagram, voted for this. It's a movie called The Untouchables. So we're going to be doing The Untouchables Great cast, Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, Robert De Niro, Andy Garcia. We'll take it. We'll take a look at it. We'll let you know what we think, but that's going to be our next two episodes coming up. Yeah, if you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Nate Flakes Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Nate Flicks Movie Reviews. Anything action movie, guys, head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks. Or if you want to take us on the go, search for Action Movie Guys on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, anywhere you listen to your podcasts on. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that is Nate from Nate Flicks Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. Oh,